Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Royal Sussex Live. Welcome one and all. Let's see who was here first. Cass Sterling. Uh, nobody here yet? Yeah, we're here. Uh, if you mean a while ago, nah. Uh, oh, you've been waiting since, oh, you've been waiting about a half hour. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hello, Mad World. Fancy, fancy. Bunny Rose. Uh, Joyce Anderson. And Bromley. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. All right. Um, and a host of friends and others. Hmm. Okay. Let me grab my slides. I tell you all the the news has been coming fast and furious. Um, and there are some people who have been on spaces all day. <clears throat> Me being one of them. Judy Matasid, thank you so much for coming back. Okay, let me stand up. Okay. Stand up, get up for your rights. Hello, Tash Mac. Welcome back, Tash Mac. Uh oh. Oh, you guys. Um, um, okay, never mind. Never mind. Okay. <clears throat> Bundaba. There we go. We got us some slides. All right. And don't blame Harry and Megan. Please don't blame Harry and Megan. As Michael Jackson would say, don't blame it on the sunshine. Don't blame it on the moonlight. Just blame it on the good times. The boogie. Just blame it on the sunshine. Woo! Don't blame it on the moonlight. Don't blame it on the good times. Blame it on the boogie. I just got to. I Wait, what is that? I just can't. I just can't control my feet. Oh, well. Hello, pull of a girl. Naomi Maria, welcome. Barb S. Hello. And Juanita Quintanilla. Thank you so much. Am I saying it right, Quintanilla? Ozell Dunlap. I think Ozell is such a beautiful name. I love that name. Kai Smith, Yulibi. Um, Lola Love. Okay. All right. We got a pretty full house at this hour. Thank you so much for coming back, some of you. And thanks for joining us for the first time, the rest of you. Emma D. Hi, Emma D. Okay, you know what? I better go ahead and grab the slides I had earlier. Um, oh, I know what I need to do with those, though. One second. Oh, okay, I did do it. Very good. Don't worry, I am ready. Just needed to do a little something here just to make things right. Coming in, take a seat. We are ready to go. We are ready to go. Uh, there. There we go. Got it. All right. Uh, Clara Wyndham, thank you so much for being here. Lydia Washington, hello to you. Lydia Abacus, uh, Dutch Me Not, very cool. 
All right. So let me see. You can hear me. Let's get on with it then. Wow. Seven minutes of him and Han. I ain't looked at a slide yet. All right. So take a look there. Um, you can see that lovely. Well, unfortunate. Let me stop. Unfortunate spread. Picture chaos. Princess apology for confusion. Um, yeah. Although I don't think it's her fault. You all remember when this first came out. Remember when this first came out. And remember how I kept saying over and over again, this is bad. This is real bad. I even did my Alex Murdoch uh, impersonation. Hello, this is Alex Murdoch, and I'm up in it real bad. I'm up in it real bad. Hello, yes, this is Alex Murdoch, and I'm up in it bad. I'm up in it real bad. When, I, when this thing came out with the photo, I knew it was bad. Now that it would have lingered for days has caught me off guard. And the fact that even local television stations across America seem to be fascinated with this also catches me off guard. I wasn't expecting any of that, but yet here we are. We are in the thick of it. And still no proof of life when it comes to Kate Middleton. There's still no proof of life. Mm. Okay, I'm sure I did, but I'll go and check anyway. Yeah, troll spray is on, troll spray is on. Yeah, I was sure I did. Troll spray is engaged. Thanks for asking though. All right. Um, Oh, by the way, some of you guys sent me a couple of uh, uh, PayPal's earlier. Thank you very much for that. There were two PayPal's, and I just got a cash app from MR, so thank you very much for that. Now, I think I caused a bit of confusion earlier. I had mentioned that the um, memberships start at just $4.99, and while I appreciate you all sending $4.99 or $5 to the um, PayPal, I'm going to get the actual link for the membership and I'm going to put that up top because it's, um, it's an automatic deduction. So I'm going to put that link for the membership up top for the Royal Sussex membership. And um, if you're so inclined to start a Royal Sussex Sorry, I just logged myself out. Um, <laughs> if you're so inclined to start a royal... Oh, thank you so much, Lydia Washington got it already. That's how I just logged myself out. Uh, so, pin message to the top of the chat. There we go. And I do apologize for the confusion earlier. So, again, if you want to start a Royal Sussex membership as low as $4.99. Now they go up as high as, I think it's $99. But um, let your conscience be your guide. Um, that is the link at the top for the official Royal Sussex membership, which helps support this channel. Now, I got to give my slides up again. I literally just um, swiped myself out. I tell you, no wonder I don't do so well with Tinder. I keep swiping myself out. Um, that doesn't sound weird. Okay, so there's today. I mean, right now, got that back. And then I'm going to grab the one from earlier. Put that back up. And while I'm at it, why don't I just put yesterday up too? Oh, wow. Yesterday was part one and two, just like today. <laughs> I'm not going to be on for three hours. I'm not going to be on for three hours. I'm not going to be on for three hours. Okay. We're only going to be on for about an hour. Hey, Amber Rowan. Uh, you leave me wants to say hi to a few people. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Thank you. 
All right, moving on. So um, there are winners and losers. And in a world of winners and losers, beggars cannot be choosers. At least they should not. But somebody's going to be begging because when Megan, and they've already said that Megan was going to um, request, uh, re what is it? The um, Let me find that. Oh, there it is. This order makes no ruling on attorney fees under Florida anti-slap statute which defendant indicates she will move for upon dismissal. And since the case has been dismissed, it says again, defendant, that's the Duchess of Sussex, indicates she will move for upon dismissal. She will move for upon dismissal. Uh, so that's, that means she wants it, right? Yeah. I think that, that she wants her attorney fees. So I would expect, unless I'm reading that the wrong way, is that some of that legal ease, which defendant indicates she will move for upon dismissal. She is moving for, so yeah, I think she wants her money. And see, by doing that, it will um, discourage Sammy from trying to pull this again. Now, it's been speculated that someone was giving Sammy money for this bogus lawsuit, securing lawyers for her. Well, I hope they give her some money to pay for Megan's lawyers. <laughs> okay. Um, now, Cloud Nugget, one of my favorite people on social media, as you know, Cloud Nugget has come up with some pretty clever um parodies and ha-has. Well, um, apparently Cloud Nugget has found an image of Sammy that I've never seen before. Uh, Princess Megan wins her lawsuit against the Duke of Kentucky Fried Chicken's daughter. <laughs> that, of course, being Samantha Rasmussen, um, and of course, remember Samantha Grant, Samantha Rasmussen changed her name back to Marco because it seemed like a good idea when uh, Harry and Meghan were first mentioned. Um, actually, when it was confirmed that she was dating him, all of a sudden, uh, Sammy thought it was a good idea to change her name back to Marco. So anyway, Cloud Nugget, hats off to you. I don't know how you do it, but um, this is the best troll I've seen since, since um, probably since this troll. The best troll that I've seen since this troll. <laughs> I love it. Um, and of course, oh my goodness. Victoria Arbiter, Vic Victoria Arbiter with that horrible high pitch voice. That horrible high pitch voice, Victoria Arbiter. It, leave it to Victoria to wade into the discussion, even if nobody wants to hear it. She's always putting her two cents in. I thought, having been dismissed from, um, appearing on American television would uh, kind of slow her down a bit. But no, nope, she just keeps talking away. She keeps talking away. You know, losing your eyebrows. <laughs> losing your eyebrows was so humiliating. Why, I ask, why would you appear? Uh commenting on something again. See there? This is what happens. Let this be a lesson. This is what the ancestor, was it that, was, oh, I'm sorry. She, her lashes came out. Yeah, she lost her lashes because of the stress of um, all of those. Well, if you don't know the story, she was the victim of a hoax by a couple of um guys from social media that played a little hoax on her. And anyway, 
it caused her to lose one of her jobs. And um, from that time forward, um, she lost her lashes. Her lashes are scattered all over the English countryside. Lashes, tears. Um... <laughs> I tell you. <clears throat> oh, and oh, some of the names that they called her, right? Some of the names that they called her. It was a real RBQ when they got done with her. You hear me? A real RBQ. But you all don't feel sorry for it because um, just like the South, she rose again. Remember that? Isn't that what the old saying? The South shall rise again. <laughs> well, she rose again. Just like uh, Kate, you can expect her to rise again. But um, let's see here. Uh-huh. See what I mean? And one way that she was able to recover, she uh, reenacted that scene from the color purple. I'm poor, white. I may even be lashless. But dear God, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> you don't remember that? See, she may have lost her job with, what was it, CNN? But she was able to be in a uh, reimagined remake of The Color Purple. It was called The Color, I'm sorry, The uh, Purple Lashes. And um, as she drove away, she yelled from the back of that uh, vehicle, I might be poor, white, I may even be lashless, but dear God, I'm here, I'm here. So see there, there is a happy ending. <laughs> By the way, that was not Cloud Nugget. I actually made that one myself. That was one of my creations. So uh, anyway, I never did get to what Victoria Arbiter said, did I? The hysteria surround. Oh, you know, she's got that horrible high pitched voice, don't she? I mean, she has this horrible high pitched voice. You know how when somebody kind of remember when you were a kid, you like uh, would go to somebody, go in their ear and tickle those hairs in their ear and you just like jump. Um, that's what it's like when she does one of her reports. <laughs> I'm telling you, you have not lived until you heard a report from Victoria Arbiter. You won't need coffee. It, it's better than Red Bull. <laughs> anyway, she said the hysteria, I'm sorry, the, hyst the hysteria surrounding the Mother's Day image released by the Prince and Princess of Wales has reached levels. That's interesting. That's what I always say about the sound of her voice has reached levels that can only be described as insane. Yeah, sounds just like my description of her voice. She's being treated like someone who sold state secrets. Well, we don't know yet. Maybe she did. And it's ironic that many of those suggesting the palace can no longer be trusted has a history of being less than truthful about themselves while also claiming their books contain the unfiltered truth. Wait a minute. Is she like coming for our, the, our, the ironic? I'm sorry, it's ironic that many of those suggesting the palace can no longer be trusted. I know she ain't coming for Omen. Well, she didn't say Omen. She just said many of. Sound like she's trying to come from Omid Scobie. 
that's the only book that's ever really pushed back against the palace from any of the royal reporters. Uh, have a history of being less than truthful about. Ain't that a trip? She got the nerves to say somebody has a history of being less than truthful while also claiming their book contains the unfiltered truth. And lastly, she says, uh, she owned the mistake and she apologized for it. It's time to grow your lashes back. I, ooh, I'm sorry, that was a Freudian slip. It's time to move on. <laughs> that was a Freudian slip, I'm sorry. I meant to say it's time to move on. <laughs> oh boy <clears throat> anyway well thank you Victoria Arbiter for your two pence um, now that you've screeched what you had to screech can we all move on yes I'm ready to get on with it then I'm here <laughs> <laughs> Wait, um, did you notice the VA license plate? That's a nice touch, right? I even threw in the Victoria Arbiter license plate. Pretty cool, right? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, yes, yes. Let me keep it moving. I did say we'll be here an hour, didn't I? That's what I said last night, and we were here for three hours. Let me keep it moving. All right, so CNN to review all Princess of Wales images after Photoshop row. Uh, American broadcaster launches investigation after controversy over manipulated Mother's Day shoot. Um. That's that's deep. That's deep. Because you know what? You know, Max Foster, who is a uh, British correspondent, he works for CNN, just like Victoria Arbiter used to. And uh, <laughs> wait, was she at CNN or was she at ABC? Anyway, he worked for an American uh, network, just like Victoria Arbiter used to. And um, <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. Every time I say Victoria Arbiter used to, it just tickles me all over again. But um, anyway, he's still here. And he has been very, shall I say, negative toward the Sussexes and even encouraging others at the network to be equally as, as surly and mean-spirited. And um, if I found out that he was no longer working for an American network tomorrow, it would be music to my ears. But because um, I don't think he's fair. He is truly a royalist. I saw him watch, which is nothing wrong with that, but stop coming for Harry and Meghan. Now, I saw him do an interview with the Queen of Denmark, uh, Queen Margaret. And um, oh, my goodness, she... She does not suffer fools lightly. Just imagine, imagine Princess Anne doing an interview with someone trying to lead the conversation in a direction that she was not comfortable with. That's what I felt. And it was only because she had said something about how important it is for you to have your private time away from the public. And he tried to explain it one way. And she's like, no, that's not what I meant. And it was just like his way of doing it was very much um, singing from the member of the royal family. No, I'm sorry. I would say the, the courtier handbook. 
instead of actually listening to what she was saying. So I'm just like, yeah, he's got his nose wide open for all of that uh, royal stuff. And that's cool, but I don't like him messing with Harry and Meghan. So yeah, they're going to go back. They're going to review all of the images that they have, which is embarrassing for the royal family. And I would say somewhat humiliating for Kate, who fancies herself a photographer with her 3,000 pound camera and her 1,500 pound um, 50 millimeter lens. Um, she fancies herself a photographer and yet something like that happened. I don't believe that Kate was responsible for that photo. As I said earlier, they went into a panic because of the great success that Harry and Meghan had in Texas. And because of their success, because they have won the hearts and minds of so many people, not only in Texas, but across these United States, something that they're trying to prevent. Um, they decided to hastily patch together that photo just to slow down Megan's momentum. Now, right here, CNN is reviewing all photographs handed out by Kensington Palace after Princess of Wales admitted editing a family portrait. The American broadcaster said the picture of the princess and her three children had been distributed for editorial purposes and that media organizations expect those images to be accurate. The photograph was recalled by four of the world's biggest picture agencies over fears it had been manipulated. See, not just edited, but manipulated. The princess then admitted editing the image after several inconsistencies were identified she said that as an amateur photographer, she occasionally experimented and apologized for any confusion it had caused. An analysis of the Furor published online by CNN said that like most news organizations, they regard it as unacceptable to move, change, or manipulate the pixels of an image as it would alter the reality of the situation, the image is intended to document. CNN is now reviewing all handout photos previously provided by Kensington Palace, it added. A decision about any action will be taken when the investigation has concluded. Isn't that something? The Princess of Wales is under investigation from one of the major legacy media news networks, right? Well, well, I can't say legacy, that's CNN. Legacy would be ABC, CBS, NBC. But anyway, it's one of the oldest cable news networks. And also for a long time, CNN, I would say their reputation was right on par with that of say the BBC. They reported on things that, um, you know, had human interests all over the world. And they still do, although they have kind of leaned to the right wing a little bit too much for my taste. Also, I can't stand that Max Foster. He makes me sick. Do you hear me? Sick! He just makes me sick. Can't stand him. Um... Someone on social media posted this. I chose not to use their um, website name or page name, but it says, holy crap, I just did this myself. And it's a pixel perfect fit. Genuinely, it's 100% that this is a Vogue cover photo shoot uh, shopped in. Um, and if you notice there, what he did was, he matched up one side of her face with that Vogue magazine. Uh, you see the line going down the middle? Yeah, he matched up the two to demonstrate that it is pretty obvious that that particular image could possibly have come from Vogue magazine. Wow. 
And see, these are not squatties, you guys. I don't want you to assume that even half of what I've been sharing the past couple of days have come from some of the most ardent supporters of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Nay, these are just Joe Lunchbucket, as they say. Just any person who has a social media presence because everyone at this point knows about these photos and everybody has an opinion. And of course, I'm enjoying it. I am enjoying it. And then, of course, Cakey Katie. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Fakey Katie. I'm what I'm saying. Cakey. Fakey Katie. <laughs> Fakey Katie, leave it to the tabloid media to come up with some weird, clever name like that. But, you know, it, I said a couple of days ago when this first happened, the only people that I am worried about are those children. And if you recall, I said about 20 times, I don't like the fact that this photo makes the children part of the lie. It's not fair to them because that makes them part of the lie. And I don't like that part of it. Those kids should not have been pulled into this nonsense by um, the adults or anybody else, whoever was responsible for adjusting or editing or cutting and pasting that photo, it is so unfair to those kids. And if it was mommy or daddy or someone who works for mommy and daddy, I still cry foul. That part I cannot stand. Whatever I feel about the parents is one thing, but to have the children involved in this is so inappropriate. I mean, because they, 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 have, they have to go to school. And with so many kids having smartphones and computer access and everything, it would be pretty unlikely. I don't know what type of access um, the royal children have to the media, but it would be pretty unlikely that by now, um, at least uh, George and Charlotte have likely heard about this and what must they think. God, that makes me feel bad. It really does. Um, so uh, that's the sad thing is that now the kids have been propelled onto the global stage. And this, for a lot of people, will be the first time that they've ever even taken a hard look at those kids. And what are we doing? We're looking at Charlotte's wrist and we're looking at um, her hair on on. George's jumper, the paving, the yeah, the paving tiles and all that kind of stuff. Really, really bad. I don't think Kate is responsible for this. I don't think so because it. Um, I don't think that she would uh, involved. Well, I don't know. I can't say a hundred percent not because um, it's just so much about it that doesn't make sense. Um, kind of catches you off guard, doesn't it? It kind of catches you off guard. Lex says, did KP uh, William just write this uh, weekend? <laughs> so did KP and William just write this uh, weekend's um, Saturday Night Live skit? You know, uh, if it would have just come out a little sooner, if they would have released it on, say, Friday. Uh, but, of course, Mother's Day in the UK was Sunday. But <laughs> we're going to have to uh, wait until Saturday, I suppose. But um, I think you're right, Lex. Thank you so much for the uh, super chat. But, yes, I think we are looking at this weekend's uh, Saturday Night Live skit. So that uh, headline... Oh, KDB says, Baron, that's that's their dad's fault. Blame him for that. You know, 
uh, Katie B, I think you're right about that because um, I just, I could not imagine that Kate was concerned about posting something for Mother's Day. It seems like the, the courtiers and William, especially William with this one-sided war, this one-upmanship that he's been trying to um, push against uh, Harry, He's always constantly pushing at Harry um, or trying to outdo Harry. It makes sense that it would have been William's fault. That's what makes sense. Thank you so much for your comment. Very good comment too. But it, it just makes sense that that would have been William's um, decision to do that. William looks at anything that the Sussexes are doing, anything that Harry is doing, and I believe he just turns to the, his staff and say, uh, how come we're not doing that? And then someone hastily patched together that photo, somebody. But it happened at Adelaide Cottage. It happened at Adelaide Cottage. And I am of the belief that William does not live there However, it doesn't mean that he or whomever, we don't know how the staff comes and goes from their residence. So anything's possible. Uh, but thank you again. And thank you for being a member of Royal Sussex. So this headline, as I said, this headline probably catches you off guard, I'm sure. Um, when I first saw it, I was like, <gasps> Right. And then again, you have to wonder, is the Daily Mail trying to tell us something? Is there something that they are, want to say? And they just because of the invisible contract, they just don't know what to say or how to say it or how to couch it properly. Um, I've even heard on one of the. Well, it's it's rather distasteful, but um, okay, I'll keep that one for now. But <laughs> um, but you guys, you guys, listen. And once again, I'm going to cite those children. Where is Kate Middleton? Where is Kate Middleton? Because whatever is happening, and, and you know, I think it, we're okay to have fun with this. Everybody has something to say about it. And until the Kensington, until Kensington Palace comes clean, then we're only following their directive. And that is that um, they're not going to say anything else about her and she's healing, right? So we don't have to... Um, assume to assume the worst. There's no reason for us to assume the worst. But I have to say, I am rather curious about the fact that there, um, again, there has been no sighting of Kate since um, since uh, Christmas Day. And you know, uh, one of the Oh, gosh, it was one of the Australian stations. They did a fantastic job going over the, the uh, timeline. They have done an amazing job going over the timeline. I mean, I was super impressed with what they were able to do. Um, wait, what is that? <laughs> Oh, someone just sent me a uh, hey, princess is missing and you expect me to work? <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. You see, I mean, it's everybody's having fun with it on the Internet. But, yeah, there's a meme from um, I forgot what show this character was on. And um, it was that show with um, 
oh gosh, what was the name of it? Where, oh, it was one of those, I can't remember the name of it, but um, yeah, okay, never mind. I, and I watched that show and I can't remember the name of it. Okay. Uh, oh, Schmidt, 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 Schmidt. Not the, well, you know, where the girl was supposedly living underground or whatever. Kimmy Schmidt, the super Im uh, impressive Kimmy Schmidt. Where anyway, the black guy, the gay character on the show, um, yeah, someone had captioned. <laughs> <laughs> a princess is missing and you expect me to work? Yeah, whatever that is, the Kimmy Schmidt. I watched that whole series. Okay, sorry about that distraction. Um, but yeah, oh, I can just go on to the next one. And right, oh, how did I, okay, I, that's where I'm supposed to be. But yeah, what have they done with our loved ones' bodies? What have they done with our loved ones' bodies? And you know, the Daily Mail did this on purpose. They did this on purpose. They wanted to catch, and they always do this. And of course, they have William facing what have you, what have they done with our loved ones' bodies? And then, of course, it makes William look like he's some kind of perpetrator. And with Kate looking you right in the eye, it makes it seem like she's some kind of a victim. And I just threw the skeleton in there for fun. But um, they did that on purpose. They wanted to catch your attention. Now, this had to do with um, some, whatever that was, something about a funeral parlor and some um, mismanagement of some sort. And we've had those happen here in the United States several times over, gosh, years where they, um, the funeral directors or morticians, whatever you call them, um, they're taking this money and then they just discard the loved ones like they're dish rags or something. And so that's what the story is about. But they put William and Kate so prominently on the front page and in those big, bold letters. And to try to make it okay, they have a little arrow beneath Will and Kate. You don't even know that that's an arrow. It just looks like a pitch roof or something. Looks like a gable. Uh, Wills and Kate should come clean about what's really going on or they'll drown in a quagmire of their own making, Sarah Vine. Uh, that's, that's tacky. That is really, really tacky. Because there are people that are seriously worried about where is Kate Middleton. And to put what have you done with our loved ones' bodies right next to their photo is designed to draw attention to the cover of the Daily Mail, to make you open it up, to make you buy it and open it up and read it, or to go online and click on the story. Uh, Sharon Augustine, yeah, Sharon Augustine, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, love, Baron. Thank you, my love, Baron. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being here tonight. Uh, let me see. Who is investigating the stories uh, planned about Harry and Meghan over the years? You know, uh, somebody needs to. If one of the major networks or if a real good investigative reporter, or even a team of reporters. I tell you what, um, if they had an hour long 60 minutes, and I do mean 60 minutes US, not the one in Australia, theirs is not as 
it's just not as good as ours. But maybe that wouldn't be enough. Maybe if they had like a docu-series, a riveting, honest docu-series. It would take a streaming network to do it because one of our um, legacy media companies, they don't have the gunads to do it. So if there was a good investigative report or let's say a, a docu-series, another docu-series, but one where they really took their time. And because coming from Harry and Megan, some people are just not going to pay attention to it. Um, although it, it it was so good, the one that they made for Net, yeah, Netflix was so good, it actually crashed the system. I mean, it's done incredibly well. That was the best docu-series they've ever had, right? I believe that was the best docu-series they ever had on uh, Netflix. So, you know, it's no shortcomer, but still, we need another one. But this time, we really need them to go at the tabloid media. They need to uh, go into the truth about Kensington Palace, the invisible contract. And even Camilla and Charles, they really need to dig into that. And before people try to make a martyr out of Kate Middleton, I want some more accountability. I want more of the real story about the role that she's played in chasing the Sussexes out of the United Kingdom. Because she did definitely have a prominent role in that. And of course, she was the main one to benefit from um, this attempt to destroy them. And her response was to go out and smile and laugh and dress up like Megan. So uh, Prince William beside himself over Kate Middleton's decision to step away from royal duty. Oh, Coco, thank you so much. Hi, Coco. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Baron Mods and Swatties. Thank you again for being here tonight. So I know it seems like it's pretty far-fetched, and the source for this story is the National Enquirer. Oh, behave, behave. Doesn't he look just like Austin Powers, yellow teeth and all? Behave. <laughs> Oh, behave. Well, um, oh, wait a minute. I think my slides are out of place. No worries. I can put everything right. Give me just a second here. Huh? No, I guess that's okay. That's okay. So I, w I was going to make one of them. Hi, BS. Thank you for coming back. Uh, I, I can't believe CBS News reporter at the White House briefing asked if the White House has ever altered any pictures. And um, first ladies and gentlemen, UK. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. I, um, but it just goes to show you how far the reach of this is. They are being trolled. I mean, they are being trolled. They are being trolled by some pretty unlikely people are trolling uh, Kensington Palace or Kate. They are trolling them. So it's extraordinary. I find it, am I'm amazed by it. I promise you, I did not see this coming. Lady T says, not sure if true, but I read they made mention of Kate's mental capacity, which means they are about to play the cray cray card. Thank you so much, Lady T. You know, um, I better go ahead and roll this video. Oh, what I was meant to say, oh, by the way, thank you again. I, uh, I was making a short that I could post later, but I'll give you guys a preview of it now. I haven't filled in the background music or anything like that, but um, I will just uh, play it. And then we can discuss it on the other side. Princess of Wales' Kate Middleton is reportedly 
considering stepping away from her royal duties, according to a bombshell new report. Kate's rumored decision has reportedly rocked her marriage to king-in-waiting Prince William and the monarchy, the report claimed. While Kate reportedly hasn't officially decided, the 42-year-old keeps pushing back the date when she'll return to public life. Kate's desperate struggle with the constant pressures of life in the royal fishbowl has clearly taken a terrible toll on her physical and mental health, a senior palace source told the National Enquirer. She spent weeks staying out of the public eye after her operations, and it's only strengthened her resolve to quit, the source added. The future Queen of England has only been spotted twice since entering the posh London clinic, reportedly known for cutting-edge cancer treatments. She was seen on March 4th sitting in the passenger seat of an SUV while her mother, Carol, was behind the wheel. As RadarOnline.com reported this week, Kate was spotted leaving Windsor Castle with the Prince of Wales after apologizing for releasing a poorly edited image of her and the couple's three children amid conspiracy theories regarding her whereabouts. Kate's first official engagement was reportedly slated for the June 15th Trooping the Colors ceremony, nearly five months after her surgeries. But that was canceled with no word on when she'll return to work. William is beside himself over her decision, the source told the outlet. He's stunned his wife could ever consider such a move. He made sure she knew what she was getting into when she married him, and she's done a brilliant job, the source continued. He's concerned she's become emotionally unstable, but she insists she's finally seeing clearly. The Princess of Wales exit from Royal. He's concerned she's become emotionally unstable, but he's concerned she's become emotionally unstable. He's concerned she's become emotionally unstable, but she insists she's finally seeing clearly. The Princess of Wales exit from royal duties comes after years of scrutiny and scandal, insiders claim to the National Enquirer. Kate's disillusioned and frustrated by the ongoing drama surrounding her renegade brother-in-law, Prince Harry, and his wife, Meghan, another well-placed palace source spilled, per the report. But ironically, they've shown her there's an alternative to being trapped in the firm. She knew when she married William, her life would change forever, but never in her wildest dreams thought it would be this intense. Kate had a hard time when she first joined the family, but after a few years assumed she'd gotten through the worst of it, the source continued, before noting past drama with Harry, Meghan, and UK tabloids. Kate's been painted the villain, a racist who questioned the skin color of Meghan's son, Archie, before he was born, who made Meghan cry before her wedding, and who went out of her way not to be friendly, the insider said. Those stories will never go away, which is one of the reasons Kate wants to retreat. Thank you very much, you guys. I threw a little background music in there at the last minute. Uh, but I did go back a few times and loop that. Uh, part about her being unstable, <laughs> as someone has just alluded to. Uh, Lady T said they were going to try to play the cray cray card. That's why I said, let me hurry up and go ahead and uh, roll this video because uh, it seemed like uh, uh, we were already there and I wanted to make sure that I got that out first so everybody else can be caught up to exactly what Lady T was referring to. Uh, hello, B10 pal. Uh, yeah, so there you go. That is always, always a way to dismiss someone from the royal family, to diss them, dismiss, to rid yourself of your troubles and woes. When you want to get rid of a royal family member, all you have to do is say, oh, they're just not stable. It seems like they're struggling mentally. 
that is something because see, that is a very powerful thing when someone has been uh, accused or if they could even worse prove that you don't have control of your faculties, you lose all of your rights. You lose all of your rights. That's why the courts, the legal justice system, they are always very careful about giving a, someone a conservancy or something like that because you could wreak havoc with someone's life becoming their, um, uh, what do you call it, their, their custodian or what have you. You could wreak havoc with their lives. So it's always best to be sure. And the more authority a person has when they're trying to pass you off as mentally unstable, the more authority they have, the easier it is for them to lock you away. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I don't believe Kate is stepping away. I believe she is disappearing uh, to build up sympathy. And when people start begging her to come back and Willie Leaks fall flat on his face, she will be back. Um, yeah, you know, take from this whatever you will. I don't buy the stepping back part either. Push back, yes. Step back, no. And the fact that this story has been uh, released or leaked, it could be part of the uh, cray cray card as it was so carefully uh, put by Lady T. <laughs> It could be all part of the cray cray card because think about it in the same article as they're saying that she's stepping away from royal duties. Um, notice how they threw in there and William has been concerned about her mental health or however it was put. Um, it could very well be a setup. It could very well be a setup. And until we know where Kate is, and until we, you know, have someone independent of that family, I suppose, evaluate her, we don't have much to go on. But she might um, actually be in trouble. She might actually be in trouble. And there are people that are afraid for her. Uh, Katie B says she has not been sported, uh, spotted, sported, spotted, uh, nowhere big, uh, nowhere big lies. Uh, she's no longer on the planet Earth. They know what they have done to her. They're fooling themselves. Thank you, Katie B. And thank you so much again for the super chat. It's very touchy. It's very, very touchy. And the fact that it's taken until, what, March the 12th, March the 13th, the fact that it's taken this long for people to really dig in and say, where is Kate Middleton? We keep getting these photos that may or may not be Kate. And the last photo, which remember, they don't usually have paparazzi snapping their photos, right? But that last photo where she's looking away, I just don't know how that helps. If the palace had any way to say, please don't share that photo, they should have gone the extra mile to make sure that photo was not shared. All it takes is a phone call. But instead, they wanted the world to see that photo. Just as I said earlier today, when Kate was seen driving to the do the school run after the queen died that wasn't just a random photo she wanted people to see her that looks like one of those uh setup photos so well orchestrated that's what it appears to be well orchestrated again thank you katie b um and thank you for being a member of royal sussex judy matasis says you show kate in that room <laughs> You mean the padded cell somewhere in Tierra del Fuego? Or the, uh, was it in somewhere near the Matterhorn? Yeah, that one. 
<laughs> oh, you like that photo, huh? Let me see. Where do I have that one? Let me see if I can find that. But yeah, until we know better, until we know better, uh, one could only assume that somewhere high in the Swiss Alps or perhaps somewhere down in South America uh, along the Tierra del Fuego region or um, maybe some somewhere in, in Tibet, in some Tibetan Buddhist monastery, there is a dark-haired, mysterious woman. <laughs> Why you get me started? Why did you get me started? Uh, thank you again for the super chat. But yes, there's some mysterious, dark-haired woman who um, seems to have lost her way. Uh, Ebony Unicorn, we said uh, they would pivot on her return. Ah, liars, shaking my head. Yes, yes, yes. They would pivot, and they have. They have. And I thought, when I heard that thing about nine months before she returns, I thought that I just, I didn't know where I heard that. But, you know, I have a sound bite that I would like to play. And I tell you what, I will play part of it. And when it seems like it's getting too long, then I'm just going to cut it. But um, this is the one from Australian television. But this thing is just way too long. This is like a whole segment, and I don't want to do all that. But it was just so darn interesting. You know what I love about it is that they actually – I should put it on a community tab. They actually got the timeline – and I do mean the whole and complete timeline, which was impressive because if there's anything that has frustrated me, that is the fact that some of these um, news programs, they are giving you the, um, I guess the palace's desired version of events, right? Instead of, what we as the squatties or how we would see it. So um, let me go ahead and grab that for you. And I'll at least play part of it, but I was just blown away by it. Okay, if I can find it. I do believe I have it on my Twitter profile. Don't I? Do I? Shouldn't I? And I don't. Okay. No worries. I got it. Okay. Listen to this one, you guys. It is intense. They have done an, a great job with the timeline. Haven't they? Oh, man. Now I don't see it. Hold on. Oh, 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 I know where it is. I shared it with someone today. Let me go to their um, messages. There we go. It's the question that has taken over the internet. Where is Kate Middleton? Now, this is easy to dismiss as some sort of tinfoil hat conspiracy, but there are some very strange elements to this story particularly when you look at the timeline of dates. So let's go back in time and do that. 12th of September, 2023, Kate Middleton reveals a finger injury, which she claimed happened when she was trampolining with her kids. Innocent enough. Then three weeks later, on the 5th of October, Kate is pictured with two fingers still bandaged together. Seems like it must have been a pretty rough trampolining injury. On the 22nd of December, Wills and Kate announced an official trip to Italy scheduled for early 2024. Now, if you're planning major surgery of any kind for early 2024, it seems unlikely that you would also announce a trip to Italy at the same time. Then, December 25, Christmas Day 2023, the last verified public appearance of Kate Middleton and also of the three children. Everyone looks happy and healthy. December 28, three days later, 
an ambulance with police escort is seen flying out of Sandringham, where the royal family was spending Christmas. There was no statement from the royals as to what that was about. That's when I knew that they were serious. When they mentioned that caravan, that uh, fleet of vehicles coming from Sandringham, I said, aha, they mean business. And the fact that the uh, royal family and the British tabloid media has said nothing about it, but that Australian, that Australian news network, which is, let me see, who is this? Um, anyway, that Australian news network, they were singing like Aretha Franklin. They hit every note. When they got to that part, I say, yeah, they're serious. They are serious. Oh, did I say thank you, Ebony Unicorn? Thank you. Thank you so much for the super sticker. You see what I mean? That's why I felt good about this one. Let me play just a little bit more, shall I? Then, January 17, 2024. The Princess of Wales' condition potentially more serious admitted to this London private hospital on Tuesday, undergoing planned abdominal surgery described as successful. At this stage, the palace won't say exactly why the princess required surgery, choosing to keep her diagnosis private. But she is likely to stay in hospital for up to two weeks. All her engagements expected to be cancelled until after Easter. It's announced that Kate Middleton is recovering in a hospital called the London Clinic. Now, during those two weeks, there are no reports of visits from her parents, her siblings or her children. You see what I mean? No reports of her parents her siblings, or her children. On January 18th, the day after surgery, Prince William visits the London Clinic. It was the first and last time he was known to visit, where she was... They're, uh, they're singing for their supper. They are singing for their supper. They have not missed a single note. That's why I said they are singing like Aretha Franklin, honey allegedly in the clinic for another two weeks. Allegedly in the clinic for another two weeks. On January 24, UK papers report that the inner circle of the Waleses were shocked to hear of Kate's surgery and that they weren't aware of any health issues. January 26, King Charles reportedly visits Kate in hospital, but still no known visits from her kids or parents or family. January 28, Spanish journalist Concha Caleja claims Kate Middleton is in an induced coma after her surgery and she cited unnamed palace sources. The next day on January 29, Kensington Palace claims that Kate was discharged from the London Clinic to continue her recovery at home. At this point, Kate hasn't been seen publicly in over 35 days and there are no photos of her exiting the hospital. On February 1, Palace aides slam the Spanish journalist's story, which is a bit odd because they rarely comment on rumours. February 5, King Charles announces his cancer diagnosis, but doesn't say what it is or how bad it is. On the same day, UK Magazine published an article which said Kate's recovery would now be nine months and not three. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? And I could not remember where I heard that nine months, and nine months sounds like a pregnancy. Nine months sounds like a pregnancy. Two days later, on February 7, Prince Harry jets to London for a fly-in, fly-out hospital visit to see his dad. It lasted all of 45 minutes. Queen Camilla also visited the King a number of times. But you know who didn't visit? William. Um, listen, I don't try to pass myself off as being a very conservative person. I'm certainly not. However, I am very discreet. <laughs> and I'm very careful who I put out uh, to. But I tell you, for a report like this, I am willing to sleep with everybody at this television station. I mean to tell you, I will put out with all of them if they make another report like this. 
Why that was necessary to say, I don't know, but let's continue. Nor did he issue any kind of public well wishes. On February 9, reports emerged that Kate is, quote, on the mend and has left Windsor to continue recovering at Sandringham. On February 20, Prince William puts out a statement on their joint social media account talking about the conflict in the Middle East, but there is no mention of Kate. William also used his solo monogram at the top, which he used to use before he was married. February 27, Prince William cancels his appearance and reading at his godfather's memorial service at the last minute, citing personal reasons. And in the same breath, he says that Kate is doing well. Now, it's a big deal for someone like the future King of England to pull out of an event like this at the last minute and also just tack on that his wife is fine. Now, at that point, it had been nine weeks since Kate and their children had been seen publicly. That didn't pass the online smell test. So the next day on February 28, the hashtag where is Kate Middleton started trending. The day after that hashtag started trending on February 29, Kensington Palace released a statement addressing the online rumours. A spokesperson for Princess Kate said, We were very clear from the outset that the Princess of Wales was out until after Easter and Kensington Palace would only be providing updates when something was significant. The spokesperson reiterated the princess was, quote, doing well. Is the hair on the back of your neck standing up? Is the hair on the back of your neck standing up? On March 4, this photo emerges. It's seemingly Kate Middleton being driven by her mum in a black Audi near Windsor Castle. And it's safe to say that Kate looks different, particularly her chin. Six days later, on March 10, the royal account posted this picture and, oh boy. The caption read, Thank you for your kind wishes and continued support over the last two months. Wishing everyone a happy Mother's Day and signing off with a cheerful C for Catherine. Surely that's going to keep everybody happy and leave questions about the princess's health answered, right? Wrong. Almost instantly it became clear that the photo was edited, like very edited and not very well either. And the major photo agencies who released these photos noticed that too, and just hours later issued what's called a kill notice because the source appeared to have been modified. The Royal PR team went into overdrive and then this tweet was posted by the social media account attributed to Kate. In a statement, Kate allegedly says, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. I wanted to express my apologies for any confusion that the family photograph we shared yesterday caused. I hope everyone celebrating had a very happy Mother's Day. See, for Catherine. What a mess. The internet went into overdrive after that announcement. Theories went viral, like a this one, which made a rather striking case that the photo was actually taken in November of 2023. And if you know anything about Kate Middleton, you know that people obsessively track her fashion. So of course I was able to find a bunch of blogs breaking down exactly what she was wearing. Now, yeah, I know that the sweater in her picture was black, but stick with me because it's photoshopped. I think they changed around the clothes on the photo, but look at these boots and look at the pants. This is the exact sweater. It's from a company called Rice, I believe. And look at that neckline and look at this part right here. I've upped the exposure quite a lot so that you can see the ribbing better, but look how it lands on her like thigh area, the thickness of that belt of the ribbing, and then look at the turtleneck. Yes, I know a lot of turtlenecks look the same, but I do believe that this was photoshopped to be darker and it was just that cream sweater because they don't make it in another color. They make it in cream and in camel. Now let's look at the boots that she's wearing in this new photo. It's the same exact boots as this baby bank visit that she did with her kids. And some claim that the image is actually a reworking of her Vogue magazine cover from 2016. And that brings us to March 11, and this vague paparazzi image, which shows William in a car seated next to someone who may or may not be his wife, Kate. Now, Kensington Palace is standing by their claim that Kate will return to public duties after Easter. Whether or not that happens is yet to be seen, but one thing is certain. This situation is a mess, and it was made worse by Kensington Palace and their clumsy moves. Now, see there, I said I wasn't going to play the whole thing. I'm telling you, it just pulls you right into the story. They did not miss a beat. Now, I'm sure there's some obscure information that did not make that cut, but... It's pretty detailed. I was like, 
oh my God, somebody gets it. Somebody understands and they are speaking clearly. If Australia does not become a republic in my lifetime, it's not because they didn't try. It's certainly not because they didn't try. I'm telling you, that was intense. That was some intense information right there. Now, uh, someone said the hospital had been known for cancer treatment over the years. I've heard that as well. And then there was another comment that I can't recall, but um, this, um, this makes you wonder exactly what is going on. What have they done with Kate Middleton, Catherine, Catherine, Elizabeth, whatever, whatever, Middleton, where is she? Where is Kate Middleton? Where are the kids? Where are those children? I love the fact that they also made note of the fact that we have not seen those children. We know where he is, though. It's not her they are protecting, but him. That's what someone said today on the uh, social media. And of course, I didn't want to share their account, but that was what was said. It's not her they're protecting, but him. But what are they protecting him for or from? Why is he being protected? And, and this is an older photo right here. And very clearly, um, at least I think it's an older one. I don't think it's from today, is it? I don't think so, because uh, Willie has lost weight in the past uh, couple months. Almost looking dehydrated and somewhat sickly. He's lost weight. Something must really, uh, something big is going on. Something big. And they just won't tell us. And the longer they wait, the more people are trying to dig. So... When someone says that they're just doing this for um, their popularity, for attention, I want to believe that that's all there is to it. I really hope that that's what it is, because I would hate to think that something nefarious has happened. And like any great story, like any great mystery, you have a 45-year-old successful businessman, hostage negotiator. He goes to his parents' house. He goes to speak with his dad. And the next thing you know, they can't find him. And the next time he's seen, he's on the floor of some work shed with a massive catastrophic head wound and a revolver near his body. And the only other thing of note that we can add to that is the fact that once the news became public, um, William decided he did not want to attend his godfather's prayer service. 45 minutes before the service started, he pulls out, which is extraordinary for a royal, especially one that's only five minutes away. He pulls out. And even though nobody asked, there's about five or six examples that I know of where royal reporters, royal mouthpieces for the institution has said with their chest stuck out, a clear, full voice, they said, he didn't... Uh, call off because of what happened to Tom's, Tom, what is it, Thomas Kingston? That had nothing to do with the reason why he didn't show up. But I didn't ask you that. And then the next one, remember I read those to you? The next one and the next one. And still nobody asked you why he wasn't there. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't have put two and two together if they weren't trying to tell me something. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. That was a Freudian slip. If they hadn't pointed it out or mentioned it. And that's what's so weird about this is that it seems like 
they keep trying to tell us something. The media was more upset about William pulling out of that prayer service or memorial service. They were more upset about it than anybody else. Why were they so upset? What was it about him uh, calling off that triggered them so much? There was something about that that triggered them. And all of a sudden, they wouldn't stop talking about it. They would not stop talking about it. I speak for most people in the general public. I have no idea who that man was until the day he died. I didn't know he exists. He just looked like another one of those pompous people that you see in the background wearing a morning coat or something like that. I didn't know who the heck he was. Then all of a sudden, we couldn't stop hearing about him. Uh, Joan Lawman, thank you so much for the new membership to Royal Sussex, which, by the way, you guys, there's a link at the top of the page for new memberships. But thank you so much for, for becoming a new member of Royal Sussex. So <clears throat> there's Kate, there's Willie, and we'll just throw Edward in there for the heck of it. This is one of those photos that, like me, I'm sure you've never seen it before, but uh, Celebitchy, sometimes they will pull out some photos that rarely are seen, if ever. Um, but that's what I like about their website. They tend to go for some very obscure images. And... Um, it's anybody's guess who they're speaking about, but I kind of like this one. I kind of like that one. Now, uh, Prince William's alleged mistress, Rose Hanbury, divorcing husband after possible discovery made about her daughter. Now, I must confess, I have not had a chance to read that article, and I'm not even sure that there is a divorce coming because this is Marka and you know, they are kind of tabloidy. So I cannot be sure about that, but, but as things have been said about 2024, that there was going to be a big announcement. And I'm sure we all have been speculating that there was going to be a divorce a huge divorce in 2024. And even though the tabloid media was trying to convince us that Harry and Meghan were the ones in trouble, it could very well be the Edinburgh, the Edinburghs, uh, because after all, we did notice that um, Sophie doesn't seem to wear uh, Edwina's initial any longer, just the children, but not Edwards. But who knows? They don't ever really seem so happy together, but then again, they don't seem so sad and they still travel and vacation together. So maybe it's not them. If there was just anybody else in that family I could think of that used to do everything together. And now, especially last year, as of last year, it seemed like they weren't doing anything together anymore. If there was just a couple that I could, I don't, that couple, that's the couple. They're the ones that don't do anything together anymore. Of course, since Kate has been ill. But if you remember last year, Kate, um, was it last year? Or was Yeah, I think it was last year. Kate took the solo trip to Denmark. Also last year, William went to, what was it, Singapore without Kate, went to New York without Kate. He has decided to brand himself as the sexy ball guy, and he's going to start doing things without Kate. And just like they said in that report, uh, instead of issuing a statement as a couple, he decided to do things the same way he used to do before he was married. And then, of course, when that photo was posted, let's go back to that photo for a second, shall we? Let's go back to that. 
just want to make a little point about that photo as if we haven't talked about it enough. No wedding band. So whoever hastily uh, Frankenstein this photo together decided that there was no wedding band required. By the way, you guys, please don't hit the, I'm sorry, please don't forget to hit the like button. There is 2,246 people here. Please make sure you hit the like button. Por favor. Um, it definitely helps with um, the uh, algorithm. So hit that like button, please. Anyway, as I was saying, no wedding band. As though they're trying to send a signal. And also... One of the things that they did not mention in that Australian television report is the fact that William, um, oh, you know what? I can't say it was William, but I do believe it was on upon instructions from Kensington Palace. There were articles that seemed like they were pushed by someone within Kensington Palace pointing out the fact that William is not afraid to solo dad. Why would you make a point about William being a solo dad Why, while poor Kate is convalescing, having had abdominal surgery? And so much has happened since then, you would be forgiven for forgetting that that was actually a thing. But it was. They were flaunting the idea that William could solo dad, and that he wasn't intimidated by that. And they even told us that William were, was doing the school runs. He was doing everything but going to the hospital to see his wife, if she was in that hospital. I mean, there would be a good reason to um, tell a fib, like security reasons, right? But the trouble with that is, since Charles was there, and since they are, you know, senior royals, they get the very best of protection. So there would be no reason to pretend like she was someplace she wasn't, unless she just wasn't there and it was all part of this story, the ruse to cover up something. This is not good, you all. This really is not good. And while I've had my fun with it, I have to say, nothing good can come of this. And even if the worst has not happened, I don't know how you recover from all of this cloak and dagger trickery, all of these um, little games that they're playing, photos with the head turned away from the camera. What are you hiding? I love the fact that Australian television said, with a woman who may or may not have been his wife. You all remember that? With a woman who may or may not have been his wife. I love it. I love it. I think they've done a great job. Whoever produced that report, they, they, they've done a heck of a job. That was right on the money with a woman who may or may not have been his wife. It sounds like there's people trying to get honest, trying to be forthcoming with the entire story, but we're just not there yet. We're not there yet. And my fear is we may never get there. And if for no other reason, but I'm nosy, I'd kind of like to know how this story ends. I want to see, you know, I want to stick around until the end of the credits in case there's like some kind of Marvel uh, ending, you know, after all the credits, then all of a sudden you see that little extra footage. If there is anything extra, I want to see it. I want to see it. Lola Love says karma is knocking at Willie's door. More is going to come out. I heard today that some of his staff have resigned. Uh-oh. 
someone is bound to talk sooner or later. Well, they have those non-disclosures. So if they do speak, it will be at their peril. And, you know, let's not pretend that this is definitely going to see the light of day because Dan Wooten is free. Um, uh, Philip Schofield is free. Uh, Lord Louis Mountbatten, he never got in trouble. Uh, at least not for that. So they do cover for people. They will circle the wagons for their own. So there's no guarantee that we'll ever find out. But one can only be hopeful because you know what? Their luck is going to run out with that sooner or later. Their luck is going to run out. And when it does, we will be there to bask in the glory of seeing how the mighty has fallen. And of course, on the way to this, um, there has been warnings. There has been warnings. Now, these are super, super tabloidy. And I'm not even going to read the covers. I'll just let you look at them. But there has been warnings. Just like uh, the Globe uh, newspaper years ago, the Globe predicted uh, Camilla seizing the throne. And for all intent and purposes... Uh, Camilla is running things. Camilla is not behind uh, the throne. Camilla is sitting on the throne. Camilla is calling the shots. Camilla is the all-seeing eye. They said in 2013 that Camilla was going to uh, make a go for the throne, and she got it. Everything is going her way. Let me see. Where is that one at? Do I have that one? But you know, I love it. Love to bring that up because they did predict it. They were right. They were right. Um, let me see. It was May 2013. Ah, there it is. There it is. I got it. I got it. Take a look at this. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe you can only trust the American tabloids or at least a foreign tabloid. Defiant Camilla will be queen. And this was before... She was supposed to be queen before. And just think about it. Maybe that story was leaked to the globe just to see how people respond to it. Because when Camilla, when, when the queen died, Camilla was supposed to be princess consort. So to avoid offending those people who knew and loved Princess Diana, she would never be called queen, not even queen consort. Now she's queen consort. Her plot to seize the throne. Everything that they predicted in the globe back on the 9th of May, 2013, has come true. All of it has come true. And the only reason why I found that cover is because I was looking for something else. I was looking for something else, and it just jumped out at me. I was just like, what? And then I started squinting my eyes trying to see the date. I said, what, what is the date on this thing? May the 9th, 2013. Wow. See there? You see right there, April 30th, 2013. This one uh, came out May the 9th, but you can see that little sticker right there. 2013, they predicted it. That was what, 11 years ago? 11 years ago, almost 11 years ago, they predicted that Camilla um, 
was going to go for the throne and she got it. Wow. That is just, just too intense. So the rural rival. Now it was said that Willie wanted to live at the Admiral Hall so he could be closer to his friend, Rock Savage, and his wife, Rose Hanbury. And so they did live close to them. And uh, whether or not there was an affair, you know, in the spirit of fair play, I have to say, we don't know. It has not been validated. But since the talk of the affair was first mentioned, the tabloid media has done two things. One, they stopped talking about it. And two, it appears that in exchange for their silence, they were fed Harry and Megan. They were given a fine lunch of Harry and Megan, and they have been uh, feeding on them ever since. A little quid pro quo. One hand washes the other hand, and both hands go after Harry and Megan. Uh, Joanna Hung, let's see, karma is coming for the royal, uh, coming to the royal family. Uh, those are hate on our favorite. I saw at the Commonwealth, William and Queen Camilla got booze. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. The um, the Republic people were outside. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for being a member of Royal Sussex. And thanks for being here tonight. So um, people had some fun with uh, the whole idea of... Um, William and Rose. And there are so many of those memes where you can find Rose and uh, <laughs> Rose and uh, William, um, shall we say, enjoying each other's company. Yes, there are several of those uh, images. And this is one of my favorites. Um, but one thing you have to realize that women in that family have very little value. I would have to say when it comes to um, worth, not that I want to put a worth on anybody, but when it comes to self-worth, self-preservation, self-awareness, um, self-motivated, independently wealthy, uh, Megan was probably the only one that's ever come to that family with so much wealth. I don't know any woman that's ever married into that family that had so much, at least in modern times, for sure. Maybe in ancient times, there may have been some dowry or something, but in these modern times, uh, Megan came into that family with a uh, high net worth and also having had not one, but several careers over her lifetime. And that's something that is extraordinary for that family. Now, uh, the Los Angeles Times, as with Diana and, and Megan, um, palace misstep in Kate Middleton's saga sparks a royal crisis. Turns out not even the Oscars can bump Kate Middleton from the top of the pop culture conversation, a uh, cultural conversation. On Sunday, a photo of Catherine, Princess of Wales, surrounded by her children and reportedly taken by her husband, Prince William, was posted along with the note signed C. In honor of the UK Mother's Day, uh, mother, UK's Mothering Sunday, Mother's Day Mothering Sunday, uh, for a moment, it seemed the image would quell the increasingly wild speculation about the health, safety, and whereabouts of Kate, who has not been seen publicly since Christmas, despite rumors of everything, including plastic surgery, divorce, even death. Kensington Palace has repeatedly said she is recovering well from a planned abdominal surgery. She had in January, and this photo appeared uh, designed to prove that. Well, not this photo, of course, but there's been several times today where I've seen them trying to push Megan 
into the story. I don't think that there was a, a photo of Princess Diana in this article, but definitely Megan. As a matter of fact, all day today, it seems like there was one attempt after the other to try to somehow push the Sussexes into their dreaded uh, saga, which I think is patently unfair and unjust. Hello, Ro Rosalind Gatewood. I told you Baron William tried to ask Kate for a divorce and she went off the deep end. The emergency was she tried to self-harm herself, allegedly. After they got her stabilized, they put her out of sight. Mm. I've heard that several times today. And you did say that before. I've heard that several times today. Okay. I don't think she has the guts. Uh, Andrea Hawkins say, I'm sorry, Andrea Hawkins says, I wonder if Kate will spill all and further to spill and all to further to stick with um, Will, spill all about what uh, Will and Press did to Harry and Meghan and then apologize to Harry and Meghan and ask for forgiveness. I doubt it. My enemy of my enemy. Yes, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, as the old saying goes. Um, I doubt it. I doubt it. She doesn't seem like the kind of person that ever admits she's wrong. She doesn't really know how to relate to women, let alone people. Um, but I doubt it because her kids are still part of that system. And she has no custodial rights with those children whatsoever. And whatever she decides to do in the future, they are going to use those children as leverage. They're going to use those children as leverage. And I would say that during Diana's time, things were more chilled and relaxed when it came with the kids. I don't know that they ever refused Diana. But, but uh, nowadays, consider the temperament of William, who helped orchestrate uh, Harry losing his royal protection. Um, if I was her, I would, I, I would try to get along with the family because she doesn't have a California to go to. And she couldn't even go to Buckleberry and find sympathy there because I'm afraid her family would just turn her around and send her right back. I mean, after all, she was in the hospital for 14, 15 days and there was no sightings of her family. There were no sightings of her family for the entirety of her hospital stay. That's something to think about. Not a sibling, not a child, not even her mama. In one part of the article, and it's a long article, how desperate Kensington Palace or, and or should I say, Kate and William be to prove that the princess is fine, that they would release as proof that all is well a photo so easily identified as fake. And how bizarre it is that Kate would so swiftly respond to the Photoshop concerns instead of, say, William, who allegedly took the picture. And not just, you know, post a video or something to prove how ridiculous everyone is being. Not a wave from a vehicle, not a short video, nothing. She has not been seen publicly since Christmas Day. All we've had was three examples of what may or may not be Kate Middleton. And that's it. Including that last, well, not the last one, but the one before with no wedding ban. No wedding ban. She's at home recovering. Her fingers did not look swollen to me. She's at home recovering, but no wedding ban. 
curious. I've seen her play rugby. I've seen her climb in a tank. I've seen her do all manner of things wearing that sapphire and diamond wedding, wedding ring. But when it comes to convalescing at home, waiting for a return to work, and also the fact that the country seems to think that your marriage is in trouble, it seemed like that should be the time to put your wedding band on. No wedding band, nothing, nothing. Kate Middleton stepped down from her royal duties as she takes inspiration from Meghan Markle. That's what they really want, is to make it about Meghan. Kate is stepping away from spotlight to focus on her kids, much like her sister-in-law did a few years ago. However, her sister-in-law has invested in a coffee company. Her sister-in-law has uh, charities and such that she's responsible for. I mean, after all, they do have the Archwell Foundation. And also her sister-in-law is an executive producer in Hollywood. And dare I say, the Sussex children are younger than Kate's children. So again, how is Megan an example to someone who never wanted to work in the first place? There's nothing about Kate that says, oh God, I love working. She was never meant to work. Her whole purpose, thanks to her mother, was to go to school, meet a boy, get married, have children, and help subsidize the Middleton lifestyle. That's it. She was not meant to be productive in any capacity. So I ask again, how is she taking inspiration from Megan? An inspiration from Megan, I'm afraid, would put her right back in the hospital. Because she <laughs> an inspiration from Megan would cause her to be hospitalized again, even if she had no health problems in the past year. Trying to keep up with Megan would cause hospitalization because her body would reject the notion of working. She's allergic to work. It, it, it doesn't agree with her. Just looking at a schedule would cause her to bend over and vomit. She don't want to work. Boy, I tell you, they could really make up some crap, can't they? Her inspiration is Megan. I don't think so. Couldn't possibly be. If she wanted to be like Megan, she'd have to get up at about five o'clock and send an email. That's how you uh, conduct yourself like Megan. You get up at 5 a.m. and you start sending out emails. You sit right down the toilet and start typing into your phone. Hey, you know, I was thinking of something. That's how you be like Megan. A 5 a.m. email. Any of those things would probably cause her to end up in the hospital again. They'd be like, what happened? Has there been some complication? Well, she was trying to be like Megan. And, well, she got up at about 7 a.m. this morning and well, she poured some cereal in the bowl and just collapsed. Right in front of the children, she just collapsed. Too domestic, I suppose. Mumbles disappeared just like the Princess of Monaco. She disappeared for months, too. Wank's PR team hates them. Mm. Thank you so much, Creative Life. You know, that is eerily similar, isn't it? Uh, Princess Charlene, Her Serene Highness, 
she was gone for months, months and months and months she was gone. Great observation, thank you very much. Yep, she was gone for months. Sight unseen for months. Now, this one, I don't see the date. Wait, there it is right there, February the 5th. Yeah, Kate's cancer ordeal. Now, this was dated February the 5th. And I do believe that this came out before the announcement from Charles. I believe it came out before that announcement from Charles. Yeah. If it says February 5th, chances are it came out, what, up to a week earlier? Kate's cancer ordeal. Terrifying diagnosis. What happens next? William, sick with fear. Now, see... All of that was sounding good till I got to William sick with fear. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Not him sick with fear. Looked to me like William went out to a party. Not just a party, several parties. He may have even partied with Thomas Kingston. He was so afraid, he went out to kick it. <laughs> He was so afraid by the time they saw him again, he was a little wobbly on his feet, wasn't he? Does that look like fear? Or does that look like Jose Cuevo? Fear or Jose Cuevo? I say no way, Jose. I say Jose Cuevo, huh? I don't know what to make of that one. If it was cancer, they'd have no reason to hide it. But let's be honest though, let's be honest. If it was something to do with the reproductive uh, part of her body, then that is something that one would probably want to keep to themselves. And that's perfectly understandable. <clears throat> oh, wait a minute. Did you guys also hear surgeries? Did anybody else hear that? Surgeries, plural surgery. Did anybody else hear that today? Because I forget which um, it was the uh, the the thing I played earlier, right? Didn't that one mention surgeries? Now I can't remember where I heard it, but there was something blah 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 surgeries. Oh, Marjorie Austin says yes. Please tell me, was it the video that I played the first one? But anyway. Surgeries, surgeries, my God. Yes, that ring is a curse. Get rid of that damn thing. Get rid of that damn ring. I don't know where that sot fire came from, <clears throat> but get rid of it. Okay, thank you. That's what I was looking for. Spanish journalist said two surgeries. I'm going to have to translate that marker uh, article. Uh, Kate's done. If we didn't see her at East, if we don't see her at Easter or immediately afterwards, then they may never see her again. They'll say she's retired from public life. Maybe the divorce is stated. Uh, she'll be blamed for it. Well, you know, okay, here come y'all put your tin hats on, put on your tin hats. Isn't one of those, um, let me see, let me couch this properly. 
um, given Tom Cruise's religious affiliation, right? And the fact that someone that Tom Cruise is close to in the particular religious order that he belongs to, isn't that person that heads that religious order's wife, hasn't she been missing for like 10 years or something like that? Is that right? That religious organization, the person that heads that organization, nobody has seen his wife for about 10 years. Now, if that ain't spooky, I don't know what is. I'm going to have to find out what Albert of Monaco, I have to find out what his religion is. I mean, I thought he was a Catholic, but hmm, maybe he joined that church with Tom Cruise. <laughs> uh -huh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, listen, you all, it's been two hours. I'm about to wrap this up. Now, British Royal Family, you got 48 hours to produce a video of Kate with today's newspaper, or we're going to unleash Ronan Farrow and a consortium of Black women whose expertise in finding out if there's, uh, if, if their man is cheating. <laughs> If that man is cheating on you hoes. So, um, yes, that's what's missing. In order to expedite this matter, they are going to have to uh, get Ronan Farrow and a consortium of Black women to get down to the nitty gritty. That combination will yield results. I can guarantee you that. That's what they need is to get some sisters in there. Uh, let me see. Leg says that ring is literally out of Lord of Rings. Throw that ring back in the fire of Mount Doom, my precious. <laughs> my little precious. My little precious. Oh, my precious. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Legs. <laughs> yep, that's what they need. They need to get some sisters in on that one, get some aunties in there. That's what they need is some, some aunties from Nigeria or Ghana. Yeah, get them in, in on this uh, case. Uh, let's see, British Press Photographers Association, the BPPA, applauded the swift and decisive action of the agencies that killed the princess's picture on Sunday evening, warning that press trust is paramount. A press photographer, I'm sorry, as press photographers, we have standards we have to adhere to, but as governments and royals increasingly insist on their taking their own images, uh, uh, we are put in a position where we are simply handed a picture and told to trust the source. We should be uh, independent rather than being spoon fed. And when the subject is the one controlling the image, this is even more concerning. I guess they told them. I like that. So in order to make sure that these things don't happen, they need to yield that control over to the professionals that run these agencies instead of just being handed a document or having them forward a email with a photo or whatever. Nah, they need to be more professional about it. Oh God, yes, that is Arthur Edwards. Harry and Megan, I'm sorry, Megan and Harry wait into Kate's edited pick saga, according to The Sun. But read the article and you'll see that Megan and Harry provide zero quotes. This is just The Sun trying to divert attention using their favorite punching bags, the Sussexes. 
See there? It's like I said, they have been trying to get Harry and Meghan into this for the longest. Like right there, it says, uh, Meghan and Harry wade into Kate's edited pic saga as Team Blast Meg would never, but have they uh, forgotten that Christmas card? Now, have they forgotten that Christmas card? Um, I'll show you the card in just a minute. In response to the UK speculative re, uh, BS story about uh, what Megan would do if faced with a similar situation, an official Sussex spokesperson has denied making any comments about Megan's photo. Story quotes had been attributed to sources close to Megan. So after the Sussexes um, straightened them out, then all of a sudden today the Sun said, a spokesman for the Sussexes denied making any comment about Kate's picture. Last night, an official spokesman for the couple denied making any comment about Kate's picture. You know why? Because they did not make a flipping comment about Kate's picture. Now, let me show you what they're referring to. This photo, uh, the one that they had for Christmas a few years ago, uh, as you can see, Archie is up close. He is so adorable. He's up close to the camera, probably trying to figure out whether it's a Leica. Harry's face is somewhat blurry. It appears blurry. And Megan's face does not seem as blurry. Now, that may be attributed to anything from Megan's dark hair color compared to Harry being a ginger, or perhaps it was the lighting. Whatever it is, there were people at the time who said that Megan wanted to make sure that she dominated the photo, so she made sure that Harry's face appeared grainy or fuzzy, and that her own face would be the clearest image. Oh my God, you guys anything to be totally pompous behinds, pompous butts. Um, and I remember that. It's been so long ago, I forgot. So you mean to tell me the sun had to reach all the way back to Christmas? What was that, 2020, 2019? What year was that? They had to go all the way back to that Christmas in order to somehow invoke the name Harry and Megan, names that is, into their tawdry little rag of a paper. They haven't said anything about Kate's photo. They don't care nothing about that. Their lives are in California. The only images they're concerned with is that of their own and, of course, anyone who works at the foundation and so on. Iris, uh, the scholar, Iris is a super squatty. She says, oh, I was right, it was 2019. The tabloid deliberately edit, edited the Harry and Meghan Christmas card to frame Megan as, I mean, to, to frame Megan in some gotcha. They were exposed by the person who took the photo, Megan's friend. Uh, now, 2024, said tabloids are attempting to use the photo they edited to deflect criticism. Someone is panicking. Someone is panicking. Isn't that something? The sun. The sun. They were the ones that edited the photo. They were the ones. I'm sorry I don't have a better image, but they were the ones that edited the photo. Not Harry and Meghan. But they used that as an I gotcha against the Sussexes. 
Um, thank you, Lo uh, Lady T. Princess Megan ain't got time for that. As a matter of fact, <laughs> we need to go to a professional. We need to go to a professional. Ain't nobody got time for that. 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 Maybe they ain't got time. Right? Ain't nobody got time for that. She ain't got time for that. She ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. I thought I smelled barbecue. Well, I woke up and I wanted to get a pop and I thought I smelled barbecue. And Lord Jesus, it was a fire. It was a fire. Lord Jesus, it was a fire. And I ran, I ran, Lord. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. So anyway, just to give you an idea of what type of hijinks that the tabloids have been trying to pull, in particular, the sun, who has the sun, uh, the daily sun, they have absolutely no decorum. They have absolutely no moral high ground. Everything for them is trash and more trash. So again, a spokesman for the Sussexes denied making any comment about Kate's picture. So let that put that to rest. Speaking of Kate's picture, um, there's been some more sightings of Kate and the children. Do you guys remember the infamous uh, rule-breaking, law-breaking gathering the party that they had outside of number 10 Downing Street. Well, apparently, Kate took the kids to that party during the global pandemic. And what happened? Nothing. Nothing. It spelled the end for uh, Boris Johnson. But as for Kate and the kids, not even a slap on the wrist. Uh, let's see. We talked about this earlier. Uh, oh, gosh. Let me think. What is her name? The judge. Her name is Edwards um, Honeywell. What is her first name? Something Edwards Honeywell. Anyway, uh, that's the judge, the one that ruled today that, um, that Scamantha's case had no merit. And with prejudice, she doesn't miss the case, which means that a similar case could not uh, uh, ever be brought up again. So congratulations to the Duchess of Sussex. Meghan Markle wins defamation lawsuit brought by half-sister Samantha Markle, Grant Rasmussen Markle. And did she have another last name? I forgot. Anyway, again, she uh, was victorious in her case against Samantha um, Grant Rasmussen, Marco Rasmussen, Marco. So. And here's somebody else. Um, trolling the whole Kate Middleton thing. You saw the one on the right side before, but check out the one on the left. Like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing and I wanted to express my apology for any confusion the family photograph we shared yesterday caused. I hope everyone celebrate, celebrating that is, had a very happy Mother's Day. <laughs> 
I'm not even sure what the, the thing is supposed to be, but I just think it's funny that they're trolling them. And then, of course, here on the right side, our new social media intern, Kate, did a great job capturing Jillian's, um, Murphy's return to Dublin Airport this morning after the his Oscar success. Now, notice that I believe he's holding, is that a Nigerian flag? <laughs> Is that a Nigerian flag? I think so. Supposed to be the Irish flag. Anyway, that's cute. And yes, there was that conversation today, that very bizarre conversation at the White House. White House ever digitally alter photos of the president? Vice President, personally, uh, digitally altered? Not that I know of. I would say no. Why would we digitally alter photos? Are you I mean, talking about? Are you are you comparing us to uh, the uh, what's going on in the UK? I'm doing the diligence <laughs> to ensure that the leader well, of another country wouldn't alter what, photos. Why does the monarch side? have to do anything with us? Uh, no, that is not something that we do here. Okay. <laughs> That's why I asked. Everybody's trolling the royals. Everybody's laughing at the British royal family. They have become the butt of the joke. They have become the butt of the joke. So anybody who believes that this is all for publicity, mm, I won't say it's impossible, but uh, if this is all a joke, they should let everybody else in on it. And if it's for publicity, I would say they should go back to business as usual while they still have a monarchy. Here's another image of Kate and the children. Uh, it appears that Kate has decided to um, experiment with fashions while she's convalescing at the Adelaide Cottage. That's a cool hip look. And then right here, this story has become so big that AI seems to have hidden her in a cave or I don't know what's going on here. Is she rising up for Easter? <laughs> Is this how she's going to appear when she rises from... Um, from um, when they move that rolling stone and she emerged from the tomb. Maybe that's where they're going with this. I'm not sure. And then there are some people that are of the opinion that Kate has been stashed away with all of those top secret documents that were taken from the White House back in 2021. Yes. There are people who are of the opinion that Kate has been stashed away in a Mar-a-Lago bathroom with thousands of highly classified documents. That's fun, right? And then of course, one of the reasons why Kate doesn't realize that people are looking for her is because she is wearing some of those Apple noise canceling headphones and she just don't hear people calling out for her. So yeah, she's probably watching the last season of the crown. By the time she finishes up the crown, she'll be back to work. So worry not everyone. She'll be back. I know a lot of you guys are upset and possibly losing sleep or what have you, but she'll be back. And then, of course, yesterday we let Camilla know that it was time to abolish the monarchy. We guess the waving means she agrees. Yeah, they said that you could actually barely see it, but Camilla is waving at the protesters. She's actually lift up one of her hind legs and she's like taking her uh, hoof and 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 just tapping at the at the glass, which of course 
uh, Charles asked her not to do that because, you know, that car is a one of a kind uh, Bentley and doing that could actually damage the glass. So, but they did ask her not to do that. And I believe this is the last thing. Yep, this is the last thing you, oh, no, it's not. Yes, it is. Is it? Maybe. Uh, British royalty visit Uvalde. You hear that? British royalty visits Uvalde. Uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle recently made a stop in Uvalde to visit families of the Robb Elementary mass shooting. So there you go. This is what a lot of television stations across the region and even across the United States, they ran with this story. And what was great about it, um, I would guess more people saw the Sussexes that weekend than you would probably have on any given weekday or, in, or any given day. Because the thing is, a lot of those local television stations, they don't have a daily royal report. There's no daily royal report. And so not only was the story about Harry and Meghan in Austin and Uvalde a news story in all of the usual news sources, but think about all of the regional newspapers and television uh, news and everything else that was running that story. People that don't talk about the royals for months at a time, they were talking about the royal visit from Harry and Meghan. So I think that that's done a world of good for their image. And also it gave them a chance to be around people that are not in Montecito. Not that there's anything wrong with people in Montecito, but um, I want them to spend more time traveling around the country. And there's something about Texas that just keeps bringing them back. So let me see the formula. One, uh, Harry went to that rodeo that time. There's always something bringing them down there. So that's a good thing. Oh, our last word of the day. It's only after we lost everything that we are free to do anything. It's only when we lost everything that we're free to do anything. Don't forget that. Don't be encumbered by all of your bric-a-brac and thingamajigs, all of the clothes that you don't wear, all of the dishes you never use. Don't let that stuff hold you down. Get rid of that stuff. If you have too much of this and too much of that, I know it's a struggle, but you have to lighten the load. And once you do that, you leave yourself wide open for new adventures, for new things. So you have to give up something in order to get something. You have to give to get. So remember, it's only after we've lost everything that we are free to do anything. Amen? Joan Lautman, member for 15 months. Wow, how cool. Thank you so much for that. All right, you guys, I'm done. Love you. I will see you all tomorrow. And if there's a lot to talk about, we may come on again twice tomorrow. We'll see. But uh, everything has been big, 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 just like Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas. So uh, thank you all very much. And again, thank you all for keeping Jerry White in your prayers. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, thank you to the Mod Squad for keeping this a safe space. And remember, this has not been a Mark Goodson or a Bill Totson production. No animals were maimed or injured throughout Royal Sussex. Uh, any nudity and violence was probably simulated and probably not welcome. Um, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. And that's all. Good night. Sleep tight. Um, and of course, don't forget, whenever we see our queens, it's time to go.
and you know what I mean.